So we've looked at exponential functions now, and we did some transformations to our basic graphs, like y equals 2 to the x. But one transformation we haven't done yet is its inverse. Remember, the inverse is when you switch its x and y values. So what if we were to do that? What if we were to switch x and y? So I'm actually going to draw this down here. So if we swap the x and y values around, now when x is a quarter, y would be negative 2. And when x is a half, y would be negative 1. And when x is 1, y would be 0. And when x is 2, y would be 1. And x is 4, y would be 2. So I've just swapped all the points around. And now I'm going to plot them again. So when x is a quarter, the y value is minus 2. When x is a half, the y value is minus 1. When x is 1, the y value is 0. When x is 2, the y value is 1. And when x is 4, the y value is 2. So connecting the dots, our graph would look something like that. And remember, another way of looking at it is when we when we draw that diagonal line, the line y equals x, they should be reflections about that line y equals x. So the red graph there would definitely represent the inverse of the graph of y equals 2 to the x. But what would its equation look like? Well, let's do the algebra and find out. So if I were to do this, I would take the x value, the y value, and replace it with the x. I would take the x value and I would replace it with y. So that would be the equation of the inverse. But usually we like to, usually we like to isolate y. Well, because y is an exponent, I'm going to need to take the logarithms of both sides. And when I take the log of this side, because it has an exponent, I can put the exponent down in front. So I would get log x equals y log 2. And isolating y, that would get me log of x divided by log of 2. Or simply log base 2 of x. So. The exponential function, y equals 2 to the power x, and the logarithmic function, y equals log base 2 of x, are inverses of each other. So that's a really important concept. If you have y equals a to the power of x, then the inverse of that function would be log base a of x. So whatever this number is, y equals a to the x, the equation of the inverse of that function is log base a of x. That means that a logarithmic function is the inverse, or all the x, y values have been switched from the exponential graph, y equals 2 to the x. So let's compare, or let's graph now rather, a few of these logarithmic functions and see what their properties look like. So we've already looked at the graph of y equals log base 2 of x, and I've sketched it there. What if we looked at a different base, such as y equals log base 3 of x? Well, we could do a table of values. We have an x value of 1. Let's, let's, that would look then like this. y equals log base 3 of 1. So remember, when we have logarithms, we're asking ourselves, what would be the exponent on 3? That gives us an answer of 1. Well, clearly that would be 0, because we know that any number to the power of 0 is 1. So there's one point on the graph. The next point I'm going to try is going to be 3. Because when I put 3 in for x, now I'm asking what's the exponent on 3 that gives me 3? Well, that would be 1. And my next strategic x point to pick would be 9 
because the exponent on 3 that would make this equal 9 is 2. I think you maybe get the idea here. The next one to try would be 27. Because the number that would need to be applied, the exponent that would need to be applied to 3 to get 27 would be 3, because 3 cubed is 27. We know that all log graphs go through, or have an asymptote here of the the uh, y-axis, so it will come zooming up along here. It goes through the point 1, 0, and then when x is 3, y is 1. And when x is 9, y is 2. And there's no way I'll be able to plot that point on here. So you can see a very similar curve. Um, to graph y equals log base 2 of x. Let's look at um, what would happen if the base was less than 1. Okay, y equals log base a half of x. So the point that I'm going to like to try first is 1 half for x because and now I'm saying what's the exponent on 1 half that gives me 1 half? Well, 1. The next number I could try is 1 for x, because what's the exponent on 1 half that equals 1? Well, we know that any number to the power of 0 is 1. The next point I could try would be 2. Now, this gets a little bit tricky, because the base is a half. So what would be the exponent on 1 half? That equals 2, what would be my exponent? Well, first of all, I would want to take the reciprocal of this function. If I take the reciprocal of 1 half, that would actually give me 2. So my exponent needs to be negative 1. Because 1 half to the power of negative 1 is 2. And my next, my next value to try for x would be 4. Replace the x value with 4. Now we're asking ourselves, what is the exponent on 1 half that gives us 4? Well, again, I'm going to need to reciprocal that, so I'm going to need a negative to make it 2, and then I'm going to need to square it to get it to 4. So, negative 2. Now let's plot these points. I think we have enough here to get our, our basic curve. So 1 half becomes 1. 1 becomes 0, 2 becomes minus 1, 4 becomes 2, 3, 4, 4 becomes minus 2. And we get our smooth curve. We could do some more points. We could do we could do 8 and that would be minus 3. 8 would be minus 3. Same, same way. So the graph does look different as soon as our base becomes smaller than 1. Basically what we get then is a reflection of the graph in the x-axis. So if the base is between 0 and 1, we're going to get curves that go this way. And if the base of the logarithm is more than 1, we're going to get curves that are going to head this way. So let's summarize the properties and compare them, let's summarize the properties of the log graphs and compare them with the graphs of exponential functions. So looking at the properties of the logarithmic function y equals log base a of x, if a is a decimal or a fraction between 0 and 1, for example y equals log base 0 0.5 or base a half of x, then your graph will be a smooth curve curving down towards the right, like so. And if the base a is more than 1, for example y equals log base 2 of x, then the graph will be a smooth curve curving up towards the right, like so. And when we look at the properties of the logarithmic function, we can see that regardless of what base a is, the domain 
will be x greater than 0, so all positive values for x. The range will be y, all real numbers, any value for y. The x-intercept will always be 1. The y-intercept will not exist. And the asymptote will be the vertical line x equals 0, or the y-axis. We mentioned already that the graph y equals 3 to the power of x, the exponential function, and the log function y equals log base 3 of x are inverses of each other. So here we have a graph of the exponential function in red y equals 3 to the power of x. And in green we have the graph of the function y equals log base 3 of x. Well, we can see that these functions are indeed inverses of each other because when we draw the diagonal line y equals x, we can see there are mirror images of each other. So the graph y equals 3 to the power of x and the graph y equals log base 3 of x are inverses of each other. Now remember, when functions are inverses of each other, it means their x and y values are switched. So when we look at their properties, it should be no surprise to us that the x and y values will be switched or interchanged. And so the exponential function, y equals 3 to the x, has a y-intercept of 1, while the logarithmic function has an x-intercept of 1. x and y were switched. Exponential function has an x-intercept that does not exist, the logarithmic function has a y-intercept that does not exist. The exponential function has a domain that's all real numbers. The log function has a range that's all real numbers. The exponential function has a range that is y values greater than 0. The logarithmic function has a domain that is x values greater than 0. And the exponential function has an asymptote that is y equals 0 and the logarithmic function has an asymptote that is x equals 0. So it's important to understand that exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other. That is, their x and y values have been switched.